So the last thing that we would like to see now is to visualize the results of our completed uh, analysis. So we'll go ahead and click on results. And notice is once we click on results, uh, what will happen is that this tab will change from the model tab to the results tab. So let's go ahead and click on results. So this is what happens right now. So now we are in the visualization module. So this is now what's selected. So this is the visualization module. And the model here, this is, I see the work directory and the name of the job. And uh, this is the file, the extension that we mentioned, .odb or the output database. And we can see it here as well in this model tree. So what we're seeing right here, this green colored thing, this is pretty much, uh, this is what's selected, which is the undeformed shape of my model. So here you have all the different things that you can do. You can click on that to show the deformed shape. Uh, you can click on this to show contours on the deformed shape. Uh, so you can do many, many, many things as well. Uh, you can show symbols on the deformed shapes. You can play videos of the animation. Uh, you can extract data, X, Y data and plot them. Uh, you can do section cuts over here. Uh, to visualize like uh, things in a section cut, deformations or stresses. So many, many things we can do. So let's start with the most obvious thing that we can do, which is clicking on this one over here that says plot contours on the deformed shape. Uh, so right now, let's click on that. So once I click on that, uh, I see right now that there is a deformed shape that shows over here. Uh, maybe it's not very clear, but I will zoom in. So let me zoom in over here. It, it's not very clear because I have too many mesh elements, so it's a little bit of dark. It's very, very dark inside. But if I zoom a little bit, so now you see the deformed shape of the plate. And then if I rotate, you can see the deformation here in the end plate, as well as uh, the bolts and everything. So that seems fine. That looks good. But if I want this to be clear, uh, what we can do, uh, let's go here to the first icon. So this is the one that says common options. Let's click on common options. And over here for the visible edges, right now we are showing the exterior edges. So this means we are seeing these black lines that constitutes the edges of my mesh elements but this makes it very dark and it's not very good visually. So let's select feature edges only. So we can see the edges of the parts, but not the edges of the mesh elements. So if I select this and then if I click apply, so as you see right now, so this is a much, much better uh, deformation uh, uh, contours. I, everything is now clear. I don't see the, my mesh elements. I only see the contours. So this is much, much better. Uh, from this same dialog, the common plot options, uh, you can uh, you can select many things like what to view. You could only sh see the free edges. You can remove all edges at all if you want for some reason. Uh, the scale factors right now, the scale factor is automatically computed and it's one. So I'm seeing the actual uh, deformation with a scale of one. But if you want to exaggerate or uh, the the deformation for instance so that it's more visible so you can play with these options you can use uh, some scale factors so for instance i can multiply the deformation by two if i click apply so now you see more deformation uh, but now let me go for the auto compute that's fine uh, i don't want to modify that uh, you can play with the colors and the styles uh, the colors of things uh, you can uh, show labels, um, so you can play with those things if you want to optimize or uh, have a very good uh, visuals uh, of your deformation. But for, for most cases, this is what I use. This is uh, the main option that I use. I always select these feature edges because it looks the best. So I will click OK and I will leave that as it is. A uh, couple of things I need to modify as well. So right now we are seeing contours, but what are these contours? Well, 
this is defined here in this legend. So the contours that we are seeing, this is S, so these are the stresses, comma, Mises. So this is the von Mises stresses. And this is the legend, and it goes from roughly zero, the blue color, and then it goes all the way to red, which is 800 megapascal, which is actually what we are seeing here uh, at the bolt location. So let's say, for instance, that, uh, so these are the von Mises. Uh, if I want to visualize a different field variable, so right now we're seeing the variable von Mises, and right now we are at increment 38 at step time one, so we are at the end of our uh, deformation. So if I want to see a different field variable, all what you need to do is to go here from these drop-down menus, and if you click on this drop-down menu, you will see all the field variables that we have asked for uh, to save as part of the uh, when we uh, modified the field history output so you can look for instance for um, uh, deformation u so this is the displacement so this is the resultant displacement but if i want to see one component of displacement maybe u2 which is in in the y-axis so if i click on uh, u2 you see here that at the edge of the beam here it's blue which is roughly 50 millimeter which what we applied uh, at the edge of the beam so this is correct uh, you can check uh, strains uh, as well uh, you can anything that we have already saved you can check right here so these are plastic strains in the different planes and everything so you can play with those but now I'm going to go back to my stresses. This is mostly what I would like to see. Uh, but let's say here that I would like to see uh, which parts of the columns and which parts of the beam and the plate that yielded. So right now I can't tell exactly. Well, I see the green color and I know that the green color here in the contours uh, is around like 400. So this means that's probably yielded because the yield stress if you remember for our material was 355 but if i want to modify that you can actually go here so this icon that says contour options and if i click on that so you can modify many things here for the contour options so right now for instance this legend is divided into 12 different uh, increments uh, you can increase this so the contour intervals, you can increase those or you can decrease those. So if I decrease them to seven, I click apply. So now I have only uh, seven different intervals. Typically, I would like to use the continuous. It looks better. So if I do continuous, so I have a continuous, uh, not a discrete uh, interval. So it looks more uh, smooth. Uh, you can play here with the contour types, uh, how it looks like. You see like very different things that might be uh, like an isosurface uh, quilt that looks like this. So this is like uh, averaging the stress in each mesh element. Uh, but most uh, uh, basically you have the banded one. So this is what we typically use by default. Uh, there is the line one that shows you like contours like that, like line contours. So I will keep the banded one, the continuous. This is what I use. And it looks nice the other thing that you can play with uh, there are the colors but i will keep those as they are uh, the most important one is the limits so right now these limits of this legend uh, which is like 0.4 and goes to 800 this is done by uh, default automatically computed based on the maximum reached in all the frames of analysis or the increments so let me modify that. Let me actually specify the minimum to be zero, exactly zero. And let me specify the maximum of my legend to be 355, which is the yield value of the steel. So if I do that and I click apply, so what will happen? So now my contour uh, colors goes from zero blue and goes to red 355. So now everything beyond that exceeded 355 megapascal turns into uh, gray. 
And this means that now I understand that all these regions in gray have yielded. Okay, so this is very useful to play with those things. Uh, what else? So yeah, I mean, that's it. You can play with all these things and modify those. So I, I leave this as it is. So right now we are seeing the deformation at the end of the analysis. So this is a step time one. If you want to go to uh, the different increments to see what happened during the loading, so you can go here from these buttons. So if you click on this one, you will go to all the way to the first step. So this is step time zero, zero increment. And then using these uh, forward and backward buttons, you can keep clicking. As you see here, I'm moving forward with the increment. So you can see what happens while I'm uh, applying the displacement at the edge. Okay, so this is very, very useful. Uh, you can click on that to go all the way to the end. Uh, you can click on this one that says frame selector. If you want to move faster, so you can do this and you can write the actual number of the uh, increment that you want to jump to. You can uh, use the slider to do that and see all the deformation. Uh, you can use the angle to look from different from different angles on your of your section. So this is how you do it. Uh, so that's it for the visualization. You can also add well, uh, you can go here. Uh, so here, how to animate. So if you want to animate, there are different ways to animate. So you can animate that it keeps going up and down, like uh, animate with a scale factor. There is a animate harmonic and there is animate time history. So typically what I use is time history. So if you click on that, so now you see an animation that will keep replaying of the deformation. I can zoom in. So you can see here the time, it goes from zero to one and then it repeats and so on. Uh, you can uh, click on here animation options. Maybe it's going a little bit too fast. Uh, I'm not sure why this is not opening here in my uh, a PC, but typically, yeah, in from the animation option, uh, let me see if this can be modified here. So anyway, I'm not sure sometimes that this happens, like it's, it doesn't show here on my PC, but from the animation option, pretty much this is something that you can control how fast uh, your animation is going. So if you wanted it to have to be a little bit slower, so you can do that. Uh, anyway, so these are the basic things. If you want to see the deformed uh, shape uh, without the contours, you can click on this one. So you see just the deformed shape without any contours, if this is something that you would like to see. Uh, what else for the visualization? Uh, let's say that you want to do a, a cut, a section cut. Like, let's say that we want to see what's happening in the bolt. So I want to take a cross section. So let me look in the 3D. So what you can do, you can go to uh, this icon over here that says activate, deactivate view cut. So if I click on that, uh, actually, let me unclick on that. Let me click on the one next to it that says view cut manager. And here you can specify which plane that you want to cut. So I want to cut something vertical like parallel to Y, Z. So this will be the X plane. That's it. And then you can use this slider to pretty much cut at any location of your part. So this is very, very useful because now I can cut exactly like at the middle of my bolt like that which is actually at a position of 50 so this is half uh, the location this is the location where the bolt is at so i can write exactly 50 i know this is at 50 in x direction so right now i have the cut you can view the cut by the way from different ways so right now we are looking from this direction 
I'm cutting and I'm looking in this direction, in the negative x direction. If I click on that uh, and unclick that so you can see the opposite. So this is up to you. Uh, what do you want to see? Uh, if you select this one, you can see the resultant forces at this uh, uh, section. So right now it says that section forces is not available for the free body computation of shell and beam elements. That's fine. So we're just seeing those for the solid elements. So you see here the resultant forces uh, based on this section, which maybe doesn't mean much for in this case. Let me unclick that. So right now if I look sideways again and then zoom and then perhaps use the frame selector, I can move and I can observe what happens in the bolt. So I can observe exactly at one time uh, the bolt reach its sealed load or something like that. And I can observe what happens in the bolt in terms of uh, uh, elongation or something else. So this is very, very useful to use the section cuts. Uh, you can cut, for instance, in the Y direction. So vertically, if you want something like this. If you want to visualize something and perhaps you want to look in the plane view. Oops, from the other side. So this could be something useful if you want to uh, observe a deformation profile in the plates or something like that. So as you see here, our contact is working very fine. So all my surfaces are not penetrating each other because we have a fine mesh. So everything is uh, behaving as it should be. So that looks fine. So this is the section cut. This is very, very uh, useful uh, thing to do. Uh, what else you can do with the visualization? There are many things actually you can do with the visualization. Um, so right now we are just visualizing data. We are not uh, we are not actually extracting any data yet. Uh, what we can do? We can uh, click on tools, and we can click on query. Remember this query; it's very useful. And then you can select like probe values. Let me put it here on the side. So if I click on probe values, so right now I can move my uh, mouse at any location. And then automatically here, if I click at any point, let's say this point over here. So on uh, the window on the left, it's telling me that this is part instance beam dash one, and this is element ID 230. The type of the element is S4R. And the nodes, these are pretty much the corner nodes of this uh, uh, mesh element. These are the ID for the four nodes. And the value of the von Mises stress at this point is 356. So this is very, very useful propping values. So I can move here to the bolt. Again, if I hover on the bolts, the bolt now, the stress in the bolt is about 640. <coughs> and you can get all the specific details. So this is from the probe values. Very, very uh, useful uh, information. I can close that. Uh, what else we can do? Um, let me see. So this is for the visualization. This is something very, very useful. Uh, we can, uh, what else? We can uh, visualize something else. So in this legend, for instance, right now you are seeing uh, the legend. It says, uh, it looks like that. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, you, might, you might observe that my viewport has a white background. And perhaps in your abacus, it doesn't have a white background. So the reason why I have a big white background and I have this dimension of font size and everything, this is because I modified those options when I first started using Abacus and I set this as the default visualization option. Uh, because actually if you start Abacus, the, it, it would not look like this. You will have like this bluish uh, gray gradient for the background. So how can you modify these things? So actually, if you go to viewport, and if you go to uh, viewport annotation options, 
So over here, you have a number of things that shows in the viewport. You have this thing, which is called the compass, which pretty much you can click on any uh, part on it uh, to visualize different uh, views. So this is called the compass. This is called uh, the triad, the X, Y, Z. And uh, this is called the legend. So this is this one. And uh, this one, these are called the title and the state block and uh, that's it. So th these are these ones. So if I unclick the state block, for instance, and I click apply, then I don't see this one over here. And perhaps this is something that you would like to do if you want a clean uh, viewport. If you want it, then you can uh, select it from here. Uh, if you don't want this uh, compass, you can click on here and then you can click apply. Then you don't have the compass. So perhaps this is something that you want. That's fine. I can do it like this. Uh, for the legend, uh, so right now we have only the triad available and the legend. So if I go to the triad, you can fix the triad size. So right now it's six. I can make it like, for instance, eight. So I make it bigger. Uh, perhaps I can modify the label font. Uh, for instance, I can perhaps make it... Uh, Times New Roman, for instance. Well, this is up to you. And maybe I make the size like uh, 14 and I can click apply. Yeah, so that looks maybe better. That's fine. So you can control everything pretty much. And the same thing I can do for the legend. So the same thing I can do for the legend. Uh, so right now, the background of the legend, I'm using transparent. If you can modify it, you can modify it. You can make the black background if you want, but I'll just keep it transparent, like similar to the white background that I have here. Uh, the font, again, you can modify if you want. Uh, so if I want to be consistent, let's make this as well times New Roman. So it looks like this, maybe it's a little bit small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, that's too big. Uh, that's fine, can keep it like that. Uh, you can uh, as well here I have like decimal points but perhaps these decimal points when it comes to stresses it's not very relevant I don't care about this decimal points I just need round numbers so you can do this here so you can check the format of your legend I want it to be fixed and then decimal numbers places maybe I can put zero and if I click apply yes so this looks uh, much more uh, better uh, to observe things right uh, and then you can uh, specify even the location of of this legend so if you don't want it to be here if you want it to be on the right side so you can play with the location here maybe i can put it at 80 percent so you see right now i moved it all the way to the right so you can do anything pretty much that you want uh, by moving things okay uh, what else? From the viewport, you can create annotation if you want. So, for instance, I can create an arrow and text. I can click on OK, continue. Uh, so, I can click the location of the arrow. So, for instance, I can put here. And then I can just put any annotation. I click again and I say... Uh, beam and like whatever anyone that any uh, annotation that you want and you can select the font and everything and I can say preview and okay here is how it looks like so you can put annotation on your uh, deformation profile and uh, later on of course you can save this as a figure or something like that if you want to show it to somebody else uh, and this also, this annotation will be available as well while you're playing any animation or something else. Uh, if you want to delete the animation, then you can go to the annot viewport, annotation manager, and then you can select the arrow and the text, for instance, and you can delete them if you want. All right, so you can add annotations, you can put anything in your uh, viewport. Uh, what else? You can also view uh, multiple viewports. So we can say here, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, you can, in viewport, you can click on create. 
And if I do that, uh, let me do again, create. So right now I created three viewports as you see here. So if I click on those, I can switch between the different viewports, but I don't see anything here. So actually what you need to do, you need to say like for instance, a cascade uh, uh, vertically. So here you go. So now I opened three viewports. Maybe I can close this one. Uh, let me put this one a little bit here. So I can show different views of my model. So perhaps here I can show the 3D, a 3D view, all right? And over here, I can select this viewport, make it active. And perhaps here I can show like a zoomed view of uh, of my connection, okay? So you can do this thing and then you can actually play animation here and then you can select, activate the other viewport and click animation. And then both uh, viewports will be synchronized in the same time. So this is very useful if you want to visualize things uh, from different angles, all right? So for now, I'll just close this viewport. Let's just keep the main viewport again, our major thing. Okay, so uh, what else you can do? Uh, so again, as you've seen, like there are many, many things that you can do. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so here you can go again for the ODP display options. Uh, sorry, not this one. Ah, yes, from this one, I can render the shell thickness. So this is for the uh, beam. I can click apply and then my beam, I can see the thickness. So if you want this to be more realistic, so here is how it looks. Uh, you can, uh, if I play an animation like that, let's say that you want to save this animation. So you can click on animate here and then you can click on save as. And here you need to specify the name of the file and the location of the to uh, for the file folder. By default, it's in. it will be saved in the uh, work directory. So here I can call it uh, um, my video, for instance. And you can select the format. Uh, and typically next to the format, you have this uh, AVI format options. Uh, try to, you can select the size of the video format, like in terms of resolution, but also the codec. The codec is very important because I think if you use like Microsoft RLE, it probably once the video has been generated, it will not work correctly if you have a Windows machine or something like this. So you need to select Microsoft Video 1, this codec, and you can change the quality. Maybe you can make it like very high quality and say OK. Uh, and here, this is like basically what to include in your uh, video. Do you want to capture everything inside the viewport? Well, let's keep it as it is right now. Then you can select the number of frames per second uh, for your video. So as you said, as you we mentioned, we have uh, 38 frames. So these are 38 iterations, right? Uh, 38 increments, sorry. So this means if I put the rate at 38, this means that my video will be one second long, right? Which is not uh, good, this will be very, very fast. So perhaps uh, I would like to keep it a little bit slow. So maybe I will save this uh, 38, maybe I want it to be like 10 seconds. So perhaps four frames per second. And if you click OK, so now as you see here, Abacus is saving the file. So now it has been saved. So if I go to my uh, work directory, you will see here the video has been generated. So this is my video over here, uh, about four megabytes. If I double click on that, then you can see the video uh, has been generated of my deformation and it's roughly eight seconds long. So this is how you can create uh, a video.
So this concludes like all the visualization that you can do over here in your viewport. Yeah, an important thing, as we mentioned, we have uh, modified how uh, the, from the graphics options, if you go to the view, the graphics options, uh, by default, Abacus actually looks like this, like this is like the default, uh, typically the default background, but I modified this to be solid white. So you can play with this, like if you want to change the background of Abacus. So after we have changed all these options, uh, if we close uh, our uh, model and then open it again, we are going to lose all these uh, modifications or preferences that we have done. So if you want to save those, you need to go to File. And then you need to say uh, Save Display Options. So if you click on that, and then you can tell uh, Abacus that you want to save this in the current directory. So whenever you are opening anything from the current directory, the same uh, display options will be uh, available. Uh, or you can save it in the home directory. So whenever you are opening Abacus in general, uh, these uh, display options will still remain the same. I will not uh, save it now because I already have this saved from before but you can do that in order to keep the same preferences every time you open Abacus. All right, so this, uh, this concludes, as we said, like all the visualizations and all the things that you can manipulate in order to visualize things uh, in Abacus. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, extracting data. So in my analysis, the one that we did Actually, what I care about, I would like to see the, the relation between the reaction force and the deformation or the beam tip displacement. So I want to see that. So how can we extract data? So this uh, we can do from this icon over here that says create XY data. So if I click on create XY data, I have a number of options so I can get something from the ODB history output. But if you remember, we haven't defined any history output, although this would have been the proper way to do things in order to make things faster. But anyway, we, we didn't define any history outputs, but we defined field output by default. So if you select ODB field output and you click continue, so here you just need to select the variable. So the variable that we want to select, let's say that we care about the uh, displacement of this point, the beam uh, end, uh, in the direction of Y or U2. So here, this is not an integration point. This is a unique nodal. So this is a unique node. So I select that. And then I need to select the field variable that I'm interested in. So this is U, spatial displacement. And then I select U2. So now I told Abacus that I want to extract the U2, this field variable for this unique nodal, but which one? Then you need to select for this uh, tab over there. And then you need to select the point. So the point, you can select it in different ways. You can actually select it from the viewport. So right now it says pick from viewport. So you can say edit selection and then pretty much Abex is telling you select the node so you can go in your viewport and select any node that you want. So you can go and select this one over here and say done. And right now one node is selected or uh, you can select this uh, based on node labels. If you know the node label, like the number, you can write it here or you can go to node sets. We have already defined some reference points, right? So these are all uh, automatically uh, are here, reference point one. So these are the uh, default names by Abacus. So if I click on highlight items in viewport, uh, not sure why it's not showing here, but uh, typically you should see those uh, being highlighted in my viewport for the three points. But anyway, if you have any sets or node sets that you have already defined, they will appear here and then you can select those directly.
But for this reason, okay, let me just select from the viewport again, this point and I click done. So now the one node is selected. So I have now two options. I can save the data or I can plot it. So if you click save, then Abacus is telling you that XY data will be extracted from the field output using default names and XY data are going to be saved only for the current Abacus session. So they are going to be saved internally here in this session that we have open. So I can say OK. So now the XY data has been created. Uh, if you want to plot it, you can actually plot in Abacus. So if I click on plot, so you see here, a plot has been generated, displacement with respect to time. So the time here goes from zero to one, clearly. And the displacement goes from zero to 50 and it has like this ramp amplitude, which what we defined. So everything seems correct with respect to displacement. Uh, if I click on that again, I can go back to my deformed shape. So this is for the uh, displacement. Let's uh, select something else. Let's now uh, select the reaction force at the base. So if I select reaction force, reaction force two, so this is in the y direction and uh, let me turn this a little bit and then let's go to the element nodes edit selection so ideally we want to select the reference point i'm not sure again if this is active over here uh, ideally it should be point reference point three so this is the third one that we uh, modeled so let me try that if I click on plot yes so you see at this point we have the reaction force it looks like this so this is the force with respect to the time so you will notice here that the force the reaction force this is multiplied by 10 to the power 3 so the values that we are seeing here pretty much are in kilonewton and multiplied by 10 to the power 3 to so it's newton so you see in the beginning at time zero, the force is 20. This is the axial force that we applied from the start. And then following that, once we start applying the tip displacement, the force started to increase. And then once you plastified the end plate, then it became to reach like a plateau. So that seems fine. So now let's save this as well. Okay. So now we saved two uh, uh, data, XY data, one for the beam tip end displacement and one for the reaction force uh, at the reference point. Uh, by the way, this is why it's important to have a reference point because if we didn't have a reference point and if we have the boundary conditions applied at the entire surface of the base, this means if I want to extract the reaction force at these points, I need, will need to select all the points and then I will need to sum all the reaction forces at all the different points, which is of course uh, not ideal uh, thing to do. So that's why, again, the reference point thing is a very, very important thing to do in your model. So now I have done that. So actually, if you go to the XY data manager and you click on that, you will see here the data that we have extracted, the first one, this is RF2. So this is the one that we selected for assembly node number three. And we have U2. This is the one that we selected for node one. So these are the two XY data that we extracted. Uh, and this one that we see here with the underscore in the beginning, this is just a temporary one that has been created when we did the plots. Okay, so what can I do with those? So if you actually double click on any one of those, let's say you double click on this one, you will see the X, Y data. So the X is the time that goes from zero to one and Y is the value of the displacement. So the time over here and the displacement. Okay, so I have the data, what can I do? Well, what you can do is that you can extract this data to, for instance, Excel. How can you do that? You go to plugins, you go to uh, Abacus, uh, sorry, you go to tools, then you go to Excel 
utilities. And then the object is XY data and I want to get this from Abacus to Excel. And then you need to select which data you want to import, uh, export to Excel. So I'm going to select the RF2 and the U2 and I click OK. And if I do that, so Abacus does its thing. And right now I have Excel, it opens and I get the data automatically over here. So the first two uh, columns are pretty much the, uh, so I have this is the XY data number one and this is XY data number two. Uh, so what can I do? I can delete the uh, time uh, vector. I don't need the time. It's not very important for me. And what can I do? I can take this displacement, perhaps use the negative value of the displacement because they are all in negative and I want them to be positive. So I can do that. So now I have a positive value. And perhaps I can take also the value of the force, which is in Newton. I divide it by 1000 to have it in kilonewton. And then what can I do? I can uh, select the data and maybe insert uh, a figure. So let me now insert a figure, but actually let's modify. So the X would be Oops, sorry. So the X would be the displacement and the Y would be the force. So over here, that's it. So I extracted the data. So this is my force deformation. This is my force deformation curve. So at the beginning, again, this is like 20 for the axial load. And then I have this nonlinear curve because of the plastic uh, deformations. It looks like that. So I can get the capacity, the yield uh, force that can uh, my beam can carry and everything and my joint can carry. So this is how you extract the data to Excel. Uh, another option, you can actually visualize this curve, like instead of plotting this curve in Excel, you can actually plot it inside Abacus. How can you do that? Go back to create XY data, select uh, operate on XY data, click on continue. And from here, uh, this uh, thing, you can actually provide expressions to plot. So for instance, how to plot. So what you need to do from, these are all the different things that you can do, the different operators. So if you scroll down here to combine, if you click on combine, and inside the parentheses, you need to provide the X data comma and the y data so for the x data i'm going to use the displacement but actually i'm going to use uh, i will go, going to provide a negative value of the displacement and then i double click on the displacement and then comma and then i need to provide the y values so the value values will be rf2 divided by 1000 so right now i have this expression with this function that's called combine. And then if I go here and I say plot expression, so now you get the same curve that we had in Excel, relation between the displacement and the force. So you can manipulate many things here, like you can use absolute values, you can uh, use cosine, sine, uh, exponential, you can do many things to manipulate the data and plot them. All right. So this is a very, very capable uh, interface over here. So I go back to my deformed shape. So as you've seen, uh, in this uh, uh, video, we have went through all the things uh, pretty much that you need to be familiar with, with respect to uh, visualizing data and extracting data to an external program and so on. Uh, there are many, many more things as well that you can do, but uh, uh, as far as this video is concerned, you have been now been introduced to all the major things that you can do with respect to visualization and data extraction. And it's up to you now to 
uh, exploring your own uh, additional advanced ways uh, of visualizing your model and your uh, results. So thank you uh, for watching and we'll see you in uh, later uh, videos with more uh, advanced uh, things that you can do in Abacus.